But first this morning, we're going to deal with the ongoing situation with regards to the plan to move residents from St Mary of the Angels and decongregate the setting out into the community. As we heard on the programme over the last couple of days, there was a, a very lively and uh, very well-attended meeting of the public in relation to this where families and relatives uh, made the case that they would march barefoot to Dublin to oppose uh, what has been planned. It's clear the communication hasn't been good from St John of God and from the HSE. Uh, but to get a clearer picture of the HSE's position this morning, and we will hear a little bit more about what Minister Finney McGrath is saying on this, I spoke to Joe Rainey, who's Chief Health Officer of the HSE in Cork and Kerry, and I first of all asked him to outline the position of the HSE as things stand on this programme to decongregate people and move them from St Mary of the Angels. And we will be hearing, as I said, more in relation to um, Finian McGrath with regards to this, because he has released a statement. But I did first talk to um, Ger Rainey. OK, Jerry. Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to come on your programme this morning and I hope in some way to try and allay some of the concerns and anxieties that families and the members of the public have in relation to the residents in St uh, Mary's of the Angels. There is three things I'd want to communicate in relation to where the HC are at this stage. The first thing is that no decision has been made to close uh, the centre in St Mary's of the Angels and no decision to close that centre will be made in the foreseeable future. The second issue is the HSE is aware that the communication with the families has fallen short uh, of, of the standard that, that we would uh, have, re- have requested and required. And that's been acknowledged uh, by Clara Dwyer, the general manager of the uh, St. John of God Services in Kerry on your programme last week. And she acknowledged that a number of occasions and apologised for that. So communication has been poor around this. And that means that the information that's available isn't comprehensive and, and, and reliable. And the third thing is our focus is on what's best for the individual residents, each of the individual 77 residents in St. Mary's of the Angels in in Beaufort. And uh, there there isn't one answer uh, for all 77. Someone in your programme yesterday said one size wouldn't fit all, and I fully agree. There are undoubtedly some individuals in St. Mary of the Angels who would benefit from greater participation in community activities. And some of those individuals, over time, with proper planning, consultation and agreement with their families, would benefit, uh, more than likely would benefit, from having the opportunity to live in an ordinary house in an ordinary community. At the same time, there is a, a number of individuals, and probably a significant number, who, because of their level of disability, or because of the amount of time they're in the centre, or both, that it's hard for parents, or it's hard for us at this stage, to see how, they would, how that would be the best option for them at this time. So from that point of view, the one size fits all comes into that side of it as well. And and this is an issue as well for St. John of God and the minister as well. But are you conscious because of that communications deficit that was there and the way things were done up to now that you've got quite a bit of ground to make up in uh, meeting parents' concerns because of that? Absolutely. So one of the things I'm doing now, I'm making arrangements to meet with the St. John of God management nationally and locally in Beaufort over the next couple of weeks uh, to in, to satisfy myself in relation to the level of planning that's happened so far and to satisfy myself that arrangements are in place to ensure the communication uh, are, um, with families will be uh, the way it should be going forward and to ensure that family concerns are taken into account and that we focus on the best interests of residents. And I've also agreed uh, with the parents' representative organisation to meet them as well and we need we want to work with them and with the John of God on an ongoing basis to see how what process we can put in place to make sure that their concerns are taken on board their queries are addressed in an honest and timely way and that we can work together with what we all uh, want which is the best interest of each of the 77 residents uh, in the centre in Beaufort oh, Will you be taking on their suggestions and their thoughts as to the way they feel St Mary of the Angels isn't an institution. To them it isn't. Uh, It's not one of the Victorian era old buildings that we have had and seen in the area of mental health maybe in several towns across the country and that they, you know, are asking the HSE and John of Gods to consider why not build these purpose-built four-person houses on the site that the residents have grown to know and love for the last 40 years, some of them. Okay. 
Well, certainly we recognise that the centre is held in high regard by not just the families but the wider public in Kerry and has provided a good service over many years and, and nobody wants to take from that. I think look, before we start making plans for redeveloping the site, we need to fo- we, well, our per- focus is on what is best for the, uh, the residents and uh, for each individual resident. And we don't know that at that stage. We understand that a number uh, of individuals um, may be uh, suitable for, uh, and it may be in their best interest to move to live in ordinary communities in, in, in the wider Kerry area or the wider uh, Kilargan or Tralee area. And we understand as well that, that that may not suit everybody at this stage. But we want to uh, walk through... Uh, focusing solely on the best interests of residents, uh, one person at a time, with families, and uh, with le- this process led by the St. John God staff uh, in St. St. Mary's Centre. And the danger with making plans for a centre at this stage is that could drive the plans for individuals. We want this to be led by the needs and, uh, and plans for individuals rather than plans for a centre. And in doing that, take on the board fully the concern of families. Minister Finney McGrath has released a statement again yesterday evening in relation to this, restating that he is fully supportive of the policies and a time to move on from congregated settings. He says €100 million has been provided in capital funding from now until 2021 in respect of buying and renovating properties um, uh, identified by the HSE. He said he wants to assure concerned family members the process will not happen overnight and that it will take place over a number of years and will be done in full consultation with all residents and families. And he put the point that he understands people are concerned and worried about what happens next, but he wants to reassure people the HSC has put in place comprehensive transition plans, which includes extensive engagement with the person themselves. Does that include a, 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 a trust and a guarantee that they won't be moved without consent. Absolutely. I think the Minister has said that on a couple, a couple of occasions. And uh, yeah, that, that, uh, that absolutely. And uh, what's, I think there's been uh, possibly, and we're probably guilty of this as well, too much uh, emphasis on the national policy as if the national policy was being forced on the people of Kerry uh, by some bureaucrats in Dublin. Uh, the national policy is a matter to enable us to put the best interests of the residents in all residential centres uh, to the forefront uh, and ensure that their, their needs are not forgotten. But it has to serve the needs of residents. And as I said earlier, some residents, more than likely, uh, will over time, with proper planning, as Minister McGrath said out there, um, move to living in the community and find that very positive. The, fee- the feedback we get from people who move to, po- to the community is almost always overwhelmingly positive. But for some individuals, it's not clear at this stage, and certainly not clear to their families, that that's the best option. So there are no plans in relation to those individuals, there are no timelines, and no national policy is going to over overpower or over override the best interests of the residents in uh, of each of the individual residents in Beaufort. Okay. Talk to me finally about money. Uh, 100 million in capital development, but there, there's a strong feeling and there's a lot of respect for the staff and the experience that's been built up in St Mary's of the Angels, the way they treat the residents and the relationships they have with them. Can that be transferred to these this one-off house uh, with four people in it? Will the care packages be there and will the funding be there to make sure they have the same quality of care? Absolutely, that has to be there. Again, this is about improving people's quality of life and giving them opportunities to live in ordinary communities. But that has to be on the basis that it's they have the same level of that they have whatever level of support they require, and that can more than likely be at least the same level that they're currently getting. And I know one of the concerns that people have is that pe- that residents will in some way be separated from the, the staff and the expertise of the staff. Uh, and on top of that, then the, the with the profound disabilities they have, the issue of change for them is not the same as it is for an ordinary. Person. Absolutely. So um, the staff who are going to uh, provide services in the community for individuals, who, for those individuals who do move to the community, will hopefully come from the staff complement of both because they're a skilled staff cohort. We would want them to move uh, with uh, the residents and provide a service in, in, in the new setting to the residents. Uh, sorry, I lost the second point there, Jerry. Uh, just making the point that people feel that change um, for people who've been for, there for 30 or 40 years that the residents, some of them, just won't be able to handle it. 
Yes, and I, when I was saying earlier on that for some individuals in Beaufort, it's a bit more difficult to see at this stage uh, how that a uh, move to the community would absolutely would be the best option for them. That's based on the level of disability and based on the fact that some of these in, uh, some of these residents are in uh, same area of the edges for twenty or thirty years, and change is a factor. So before any decision is made in relation to any individual, all the factors have to be weighed up, and any move has to be uh, made on on the basis of evidence that this is right for the individual. There's evidence at the moment that this would work for a number of individuals, maybe a small number. And and then we will learn from that, see what the experience of that is, and see if that if that experience will work for others, or if we need to modify the experience. But in the end, no national policy, no policy will override or be implemented in a way that just respects the needs of each of the 77 residents uh, in same areas, including their level of disability and including uh, their capacity to adapt to change. Okay, Adjur, so next step is meet here to see meeting with Saint John of God and then meeting with the the family group to see where it goes from here. Exactly, and in doing that we want to ensure that the communication and planning is uh, absolutely what it should be, to ensure the families are involved in the process and provided with the information and reassurances that they need, and hopefully we can all work together. I think all of us can can say with a certain amount of assurance that all of us want the best interests uh, of the the residents in St Mary's. Uh, So would be looking that we can work, the HSC will work with St John's Gods, with the staff there and with the families, with the individual families and with the family representative groups uh, to ensure that together we provide for the best interests uh, of the residents, wherever that might be. And that may will be involved different responses to different individuals. That's Joe Rainey, Chief Health Officer for the HSC, um, with their response as things stand on St Mary of the Angels, what's happened up to now and what is going to happen. Uh, if you have a view on that, get in touch with us on the programme. The Minister for Health, Finian McGrath, uh, released a statement yesterday evening. The Minister for Disabilities, I should say, uh, Minister for State at the Department of Justice and Health, but Special Responsibility for Disabilities, Finian McGrath. He made this statement, as I stated previously, I'm fully supportive of the policies and a time to move on from congregated settings. The programme for partnership for government contains a clear commitment to continue to move people with disabilities out of congregated settings to enable them to live independently and to be included in the community. The HSE 2016 National Service Plan has set a target of 165 people to move from institutions in 2016 into suitable accommodation. Earlier this year, I announced we're providing 100 million in capital funding from now until 2021 in respect of acquiring and renovating properties in priority. Um, a place is identified by the HSE. This will ensure that people are able to move out of congregated settings and into their own homes in the community. I want to assure any concerned family members that the process of moving a person with disabilities out of a congregated setting is not something that happens overnight. This process of moving people in the community will take place over a number of years and will be done in full consultation with all residents and their families. I am of course, I understand there is plans to move three people from St Mary of the Angels in the first phase of this process early next year. Of course, I understand people are concerned and worried about what happens next, but I want to reassure people the HSE has put in place comprehensive transition plans, which includes extensive engagement with the person themselves, their families, carers and advocates, as well as the service provider to ensure successful and sustainable transitions into the community. The welfare and dignity of residents is absolutely paramount. This is about giving people with disabilities a life of their own choosing, choosing how to spend their day without the constraints of a large organisation around them, while still having all the supports that they need. I'm committed to ensuring that this resource is required to support the person moving out of congregated settings, such as funding equipment, community resources, circles of support and staff are put in place. That's what the Minister for Disabilities, Penny McGrath, and we did invite the Minister on the programme this morning, uh, but he's provided us with that statement and we'll hear more, no doubt, on that. Uh, another listener gets in touch. Um, this is Eilish um, Perryman on the St Mary of the Angels story, hearing from Ger Rainey this morning. In light of Ger's reply, now can you ask him, will he fund the upgrading of the dormitory settings um, to HICWA standards in St Mary of the Angels on the wider issue of St Mary of the Angels I'm happy the HSE has changed on this and Donald says if St John of God's haven't admitted any new residents in the last three years and have no plans to admit any more in the future surely this means they are closing down they don't understand what a special place St Mary of the Angels is we won't let them close it down whatever it takes that's Donald's view this morning 
Uh, another listener getting in touch this morning says, Jury, what demand was there for a change by the families of St. Mary of the Angels residents before the HSE minister and St. John of God made it such an issue? I suggest very little to zero. Now when they see such opposition, they are watering it all down to be seen to be nice and resident friendly. That's a Ballymac listener's view this morning.